You already know from the title of the video that we are going to make bottle rockets that can be launched. Some of you may even have tried it. Let me guess. It worked a few times and then it stopped working exactly when you wanted it to work. If there is any consolation, even the real rockets made by real scientists, they fail sometimes. But failure is not the problem. We need to understand what caused those failures and try to minimize the errors for a better success rate. This applies to bottle rockets too. While I was making this project, I tried to understand the cause of the failures. And therefore, in this project, we'll be working backwards. We'll be making a bottle rocket while addressing all of those issues. Let's get started. In real life, rockets are launched from special places which are exclusively designed to launch rockets. For our understanding in this video, we will call it the launch pad. That brick is not a launch pad, neither is your hand. Always remember that there is high intensity heat and gas exiting from the rear end of the rocket. The bottle rocket that we are making is fueled by isopropyl alcohol. Burning gases will exit at high temperature with high intensity heat from the nozzle of the bottle. So making a rocket launch pad is not only important to get better results at a rocket launch but it is also important to keep yourself away from the harm's way. So step number one, let's build a rocket launch pad. We need a few PVC plumbing parts. The first one is the half inch elbow. We'll need four of them. These will form the four corners of the base of the stand. Next, we need T connectors. Again, four of them. Two will go on the opposite sides of the stand. One gets connected in the center and the fourth one will be used later. We also need about six feet of half inch PVC plumbing tube to form the structure of the whole setup. I'm using half inch PVC pipe because it can fit through the mouth of most pet bottles. The mouth of the pet bottles, half liter, one liter, two liter are usually the same size. Three quarter inch PVC is a bit large. So to avoid additional hassle, let's go with half inch PVC pipes. I cut five inch pieces from the long tube. Although not necessary in this case, I went ahead and removed the burrs and sanded them for a cleaner finish. I cut six pieces in total and it is time to assemble them. Attach the elbow to one piece followed by the T connector at the other end. Connect another piece to this T connector and another elbow at the far end. We repeat this exact same step and flip them over to form a facing side. Next, we connect the two T connectors with the T connector in the middle with its open end facing upwards. Now we can measure the distance between the two open sides and cut a PVC pipe according to the length. We can now attach these two pipes to the open ends and we have a base structure ready. Now attach the rest of the pipe to the upward facing T connector and connect the last T connector to the open end. None of these parts are glued so that we can adjust the tilt angle to suit our launch. We also need a small piece of PVC tube to be attached to the top end of the T connector. Now when we place the bottle, it sits there comfortably. Let us move to step 2, the ignition. Never use a matchbox to ignite a bottle rocket. Agarbatti is for Diwali rockets, not for bottle rockets. This lighter, not safe at all. This lighter, safe but not very effective. But I have a better solution. In lighters like this, there is fuel stored here and there is a piezo unit here. When we press this switch here, a little bit of a gas is released through this tube and it reaches the nozzle. And we continue pressing it, there is going to be a little bit of a hammering action on the piezo unit and it will create a spark and there we have a flame. We don't need this entire lighter though, we only need the piezo unit. So if we remove this plastic switch here, we can access the piezo unit. I don't want to ruin a perfect lighter, so I've got another spare piezo unit from another lighter which I will make use of. Now when we press this part here, it is going to create a spark which will jump from this terminal to this metal cap here. I don't want to hold this with my bare hands because it will give me a real mild shock. So I'm going to use a plier because it's too hard to press it otherwise. Let's see if we can see the spark. See? Can you see the spark? Let's see if we can see the spark in the dark. You see it? 
we need to extend the length of the PSO unit. I am going to use these DC wires. I am connecting one of the wires to the wire extending from the PSO unit and the other one to the metal cap. We need to insulate the wires, so I am wrapping it with insulation tape. Now after extending the wires, let's check if it still makes a spark. And it does. The wires are flimsy, so we need something like a single core copper wire to make the probes. I only had this bare copper wire which I am going to straighten and attach it to the terminals. Again, insulate the joints and don't touch the bare wire or you might get a mild jolt. Once the spark gaps were adjusted, I checked if it's working and we seem to be on the right track. I took the smallest piece of the PVC pipe and plugged it with epoxy putty. Try not to use hot glue and whatever putty you use, it should not be conductive. Plumbing grade putty should do the trick. If you don't have a drilling machine, it is best to poke the probes through the putty before it dries and make sure the probes are apart from each other as far as possible. We can optimize the spark gap later. Like me, if you only find bare copper wires, insulate them with heat shrink tubing or wrap them with insulation tape. Or maybe just use nail polish to coat a layer of insulation. After the putty dries, we can bend the copper probes to optimize the spark gap and file the ends to a sharp point for better efficiency. Step 3 will be to assemble this unit on the top of the launcher. But let us do the step 4 now as it will be easier this way. Step 4 would be to make the nozzle good enough for a snug fit on the bottle but you can skip this step because I have a better solution later in the video. I am including this footage in this video so that you understand that how I made my mistake and how I rectified them. You can see here the bottle's mouth is a bit loose on the PVC pipe. It does not have a snug fit. We can wrap the pipe with insulation tape but in my experience a thin piece of rubber cut from an old cycle tube works best. Wrap this piece of tube around the pipe and secure it with super glue. Now the bottle fits in tight enough but can still be pulled out with gentle pressure. As always I cleaned the burrs and tapered the edges for a smoother finish and fit. I went one step ahead and used an o-ring as a stopper as well. By slightly bending the bottom end of the probes, they can be pulled out through the middle opening of the T-connector. So the PVC piece with the probe is on the top end with wires leading to the piezo switch from the middle. With one more end of the T-connector open, this can now be attached to the long pipe on the launch pad. The launch pad is ready, let us test fire some PET bottles. I spray a little isopropyl alcohol inside the bottle, shake the bottle for the air to get in and turn the alcohol into vapors. Then I place this on the launch pad. The moment of truth. You can add some fins on the bottle, make it look like a rocket and this is where most videos will end. But here on this channel, we don't fake anything. This arrangement worked a few times but the success rate was not that great. It was sort of a hit or a miss. By closely observing and with help from Google, I found out what was going wrong. After each launch, there used to be some kind of a residue on the copper probes. I had to clean it so that I could get better sparks for the next launch. Also, the springs inside the PSO unit, it would not work properly. Sometimes it would get stuck and I had to replace the PSO unit now and then. The third most important thing is when we spray alcohol into the bottle, it vaporizes. There needs to be a proper combination of alcohol vapor as well as air, especially oxygen because in this case, it needs oxygen for combustion. Without oxygen, there will be ignition but no combustion and without combustion, the rocket is dead. So to minimize the errors, what I've done here is I've removed this small PVC pipe with the ignition probes and I'm going to insert a longer PVC pipe and I'm going to use the ignition probes on top, I'll have to create that. Now when we do this, what will happen is that the liquid alcohol that, that kind of flows onto the probes, making it wet and thus avoiding the sparks, now it will not happen because the liquid alcohol will flow down to the bottom in case if there is any and this place will always be dry. Also, when we insert the bottle, the probe is going to sit uh, somewhere in the, in the top or uh, above the top layer. So what will happen is that the alcohol vapor will be settling down towards the bottom and the air mixture with, uh, with alcohol vapor will be on this area somewhere here which gives us better chance of ignition and thus a better combustion. So now instead of having this uh, rubber washers what I have done is I found this reducer with another uh, 3 quarter inch PVC pipe so if I can insert it like that and then insert the bottle 
the bottle can be slid down there and uh, it settles down perfectly it sits there perfectly and because of this it could probably give a better thrust and propel the bottle upward like that so all that is in theory let's see how it works i extended the copper wire according to the length of the new pvc pipe i insulated the wires with heat shrink tubing but electrons can jump from one wire to the other without traveling to the terminals so i decided to use fish tank tubes to avoid this from happening the only place where the electrons should jump is at the spark gap and that's where they make the arc you can see here that i have made all of the upgrades that i had talked about after all of this modification let us do some testing After all of this strenuous R&D is when I decided to decorate the bottle and make it look like a rocket. I cut a template out of a chart and made three fins using 1 mm craft foam. I cut another circular piece and rolled it into a cone to fit on the top of the bottle. Now the pet bottle looks like a rocket or rocketish. Like I had mentioned earlier, the piezo unit is not very efficient and I had to replace it now and then. You could do that or you could do something even better. We have already discussed that the springs inside the piezo unit sometimes doesn't work because the clicking action inside is basically cheap plastic which might get broken sometimes and we have to replace the piezo unit altogether. So here is another upgrade if you have some extra cash to spare. This one here is a high voltage generator and we have an 18650 battery holder, a fully charged 18650 battery and a press switch. I had these battery and holder so I used them. You could try other battery combination as well. When the leads are connected to the battery, you can see the high voltage sparks. Here, I have connected a press switch in series and the spark comes up only when we press the switch. Now we don't need to worry about the arc or the spark because it will work each and every time as long as there is enough charge in the battery. Now, we can actually focus on getting the uh, alcohol vapor and the air mixture correctly. I taped the high voltage generator to the launch pad at a convenient spot and connected the leads to the probes. I made an enclosing for the switch and also attached the battery holder to the launch pad using hot glue. One more important thing to note here is that you should never touch the probes with bare hands because it is connected to a high voltage generator. You may get a jolt. So short it out first and then do whatever you want to. Now we don't need to worry about the arc. The ignition will occur every time as long as there is sufficient charge in the battery. This way we can focus on getting the alcohol to air mixture inside the pet bottle correctly. I had almost completed the project and while I was editing this video and one of these days while I was shopping I found this plasma lighter in the home appliance section of a local store Pardon me for if I had only known about this product earlier I would have used this plasma lighter instead of the high voltage generator in this particular project This plasma lighter comes in with a rechargeable battery which means we don't have to recharge the battery externally like in the present setup It also comes with an on off switch It also has a press switch which initiates the spark and it also comes with a gooseneck which allows us to turn it into various angles and it is powerful enough to burn up paper which is extremely cool This plasma lighter simply has all the features that are required for this particular project honestly i wish i had known this earlier this is a brand new lighter i don't want to take this apart because the launch pad is already set up in case if you guys are going to use this particular lighter You know the drill. If you remove the top part here, you will find two terminals and you can extend those terminals by adding wires and connect those wires directly to the probes. You don't need the batteries and the press switch because all of that is inbuilt into this unit. It doesn't get easier than that, does it? I bought this lighter from a local store at the price of 250 rupees at the time of posting this video and the online prices are quite similar. 
I have given the links of all the components I have used in this project in the description below. The links are only indicative. Try to buy it from your local stores or wherever it is cheaper and try to save some money. Also, you can make your own high voltage spark generator using old mosquito rackets. But it is beyond the scope of this video. So we will tackle that in one of the future videos. I hope this video was useful. If you have any doubts, leave it in the comment section below or you can also email it to me from the email id that is given in the description. You guys, you stay curious and make something new. I will see you in my next video. Until then, bye-bye.